The Muscatine City Council in-depth session will come to order. Greg, would you perform a roll call, please? Council Member Spread. Present. Phillips. Present. Bynum. Present. Shahade. Present. Natvik. Present. Fitzgerald. Present. And Lorette. Six present, one absent, Your Honor. Very good, Greg, thank you. Uh, Council, this is our last in-depth session of the year, so uh, let's get going with it, okay? Item number two on tonight's agenda, request from Heinz asking city to the city uh, to sponsor an application under the high quality jobs program and authorize mayor to sign on behalf of the city. Greg, would you explain a little bit? Certainly, I am asking him for a motion tonight. Uh, uh, the last paragraph in my memo is exactly what I'm looking for, but uh, we have the opportunity tonight to support the uh, Heinz application under the high quality jobs program um, with the Iowa Economic Development uh, Authority. Heinz is looking to invest $24.5 million here locally in their plant in upgrades. Most of that is equipment. Uh, 106 new jobs would be created as part of this, prog uh, this program. And um, there's a list of, of the, uh, of the uh, investment that's being made here by H.J. Uh, Heinz company uh, coming into the community. Our role in this is twofold. One, to support their application and have the mayor sign on behalf of the city of Muscatine in support of that application. And two, to provide a local match uh, under the scale that's listed in the uh, memo, 75% uh, down to 15% over five years, declining scale. Uh, that match is only required if there is an increase in property uh, taxes, if there is increment gen generated. Uh, assuming there is increment generated, the next steps for the city of Muscatine would be one, to amend the urban renewal plan to include this project in that urban renewal plan, and then two, to bring back a TIF agreement for the city council to act on. If you may, uh, you may recall that Hines is already in a TIF district, so we do not have to uh, take that step that's already taken care of. So th those would be the next two steps. Uh, the application is before the Iowa Economic Development Authority next week, towards the end of next week, I believe it's Thursday or Friday and uh, that's when action will be taken on their application. I'd be happy to answer any questions. No questions, Council? I just think it's a wonderful, wonderful project. <laughs> I'll, I'll make the motion, Greg, that we, uh, that we sponsor the Heinz application under the High Quality Jobs Program and that we authorize the mayor to sign the application on behalf of the city. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Who did I hear? Tom. Tom, Tom? okay. Uh, and uh, any additional discussion before we take the vote? Mayor, I, I do have one question. <clears throat> when would the funding of this uh, project start, and when, when will Muscatine see 106 new jobs? I believe those details we'll find in the application as soon as it uh, is presented to the Iowa Economic Development Authority. My understanding is this is going to kick off here very, very quickly. Um, we do not have to submit, we do not have to uh, do the urban renewal plan or the TIF agreement before the application is done, so I'll bring that back most likely in January uh, to kick off that process, but uh, it should be moving forward uh, very quickly after next week's discussion. I, I'm very, very impressed. 100 hourly starting at $11.56, 11, $11 uh, uh, starting wage after 36 months. That's, that's just incredible. Anyone else, Council? Uh, I, I, I do just a, make, Go ahead. Go ahead. I just a question: Is the proposed TIF the only source of funding for the local match, or is GMCCI or the, any, anybody else involved? Or uh, we know? as you uh, you can note on on uh, on page two and then and on on the attachments, uh, you can do a tax abatement program. Right. Uh, they are part of an enterprise zone. There is a specific. Uh, schedule that's laid out in Iowa code, and that's what I've identified in, in, in the program. For, for us, it was uh, simply, from my perspective, easier. We already have the TIF agreement, excuse me, the, the TIF district established. All we have to do is amend the urban renewal plan and put a uh, pretty simple and straightforward agreement together. Uh, we could do an economic development uh, uh, grant or loan uh, would be another option as well. Um, but again, there, there is no local match if there is no uh, increment generated or, or, or no increase in property taxes. Most of their investment is in equipment uh, in the facility. Right. Okay. Thank you. I, I will just uh, make one observation here. Despite if it's Heinz or any corporation here in the community, when they expand, invest in our city, 
it's a win-win situation for the company as well as the community as a whole. So, thank you. Very good. Thank you, Council, for your comments. Uh, this is a simple voice vote. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 As opposed to nay. Motion does carry. Six zero. Okay, item number two, tonight's agenda council, uh, the presentation of a five-year airport capital improvements program and pre-application. And I believe, Steve Boca, you are, uh, you have the floor on this. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, I set out the pre-application, I think, with the agenda materials to council, and I want to review this with you because you'll recall we did have a petrographic analysis done on the runway which told us a number of different options for how to move forward with with uh, runway improvements and by that I mean runway 624 the primary runway at the airport um, it's 5900 feet long it's 100 feet wide um, it is 20 years old and we have had a number of blow-ups on that runway over the past several years so the analysis gave us better information on what we may be able to do to correct and improve that situation. And a couple of the suggestions <coughs> really involved making six foot wide cuts across the face of the runway at up to 26 locations and installing expansion joint material, repaving, doweling in the paving, and then doing some crack sealing and some other things on the runway at, at a fairly decent expense for anywhere from three to eight years depending on which we chose to do um, however with the runway already being 20 years old which is the life expectancy of that those pavements by the FAA and the and the PCI that's done every three years down there the pavement condition index indicates it's deteriorating and the inspections indicate it's deteriorating to a point where if we make the investment we're going to in the patching we're probably going to have patches that outlive the usefulness of the runway and so we don't see that as a very good investment in the long term um, and in, con in consultation with the FAA they <coughs> concur that probably the better option is to delay any of those temporary fixes in favor of complete replacement of the runway now, good news and bad news is if you replace it, you got a brand new runway, you're good for another 20 years, hopefully our blow-ups uh, cease at that point. Um, in the interim, however, we are proposing to let it go the way it is, and if we have blow-ups, react to them like we do now with emergency funding and try to get by rather than spend a significant amount of dollars and come back and tear it up anyway. So uh, the plan you have before you kind of does a couple of different things. One is we thought we might split that cost up over a two year period. Frankly, it's gonna take two years to do anyway. So if it's any easier for the city to meet their 10% share of this cost, which is six and a half million dollars. So you're looking at $650,000 for this. It's not any small amount, but it's 10% of the total cost. You could do it over a two-year period, um, or you could do it all, but it's still going to be a two-year project. So for the sake of laying this out, the pre-application gives you a budget that you can look at with the projects we have. And I'll remind you again that if it's a federal project, and you, these are all marked in here, whether it's federal or state assistance, Federal, federal projects are 90-10 split. It used to be 95-5, for those of you that recall that, but that change is 90-10 now. And if it's a state, it's 85-15 local share. So you'll see the mixture of funding sources here. You can't piggyback them. They don't, they don't do that. Eligible, <coughs> eligible projects are either geared toward the state funding or toward the uh, federal funding. Um, we, however, in fairness to it, we can get by if we want to make patches here. I just think we're going to continue to have difficulties. I did review this with the Airport Advisory Commission. Uh, Scott Navick sits on that. I think he will agree that the group collectively felt that the repayment, uh, replacement is best if we, can, if we can afford to do it. So I'm here to answer questions on that. That's primarily what we have. This is a pre-application. It did have to go to the FAA today. We did send it in as you see it, 
but it's a pre-application. There's no obligation. If you folks feel differently tonight, I'll call them in the morning and we'll generate another one. But we had to have it in today and I had to get it in before I came to see you tonight. So this has already been sent in. Doesn't mean you're locked in anything because it's a pre-application, not even a formal application. But it kind of tells the FAA where, where we may be going with our projects. So they have, when they're putting their budgets together, they can, they can see what, uh, what we're proposing for the Muscatine Airport. Frankly, they support this. So with that, if there are questions. <clears throat> uh, Steve, in addition to the FAA supporting it and our local board, there, our consultant is consistent with that strategy too, right? Yes, yes, they also support it. They, <clears throat> we thought about going the patching route and then uh, delaying it for eight years, but we found out we were probably gonna have significant problems with the runway because of its current condition within eight years since it's already reached its its uh essential life of 20 years now there's still some life left in that pavement i won't you know, <clears throat> it's it's not in terrible shape by any stretch but it it does have decracking other cracks in the pavements that tell us it's, it's starting to fail and that's not starting to fail it is failing but it's not it's not dangerous or anything it's it's serviceable it's just uh it's time to consider this if we do this we're looking at an out year uh we're we're looking at final plans and you can see that on here in construction really in fy 16 for the first half of that so by the fall of 15 you would be looking at a project to start the paving work and completing it by 18. Uh, with this schedule, including the runway and the taxiway. The other comment is we're kind of creating a reserve in advance of the actual start. Well, of I misquoted, I misstated that to the Airport Advisory Commission. I thought we could, we could build a reserve, well, we could build a reserve because we have our allocation from the, <coughs> from the FAA of $150,000 uh, discretionary funding for us to use in, in, in our projects. That can't be used as a local match for this big oh, okay. project, however. So that cost that you see, the 650 the 10%, truly is a city expenditure to get the $6.5 million project. <clears throat> however, it frees it up to do some of the other projects you see on here, and we have a number of good projects and, that we can undertake. So, Steve, I, if you decide just to go ahead and repair it, oh, yeah. where would that money come from to pay for that? Um, the same thing it would be done with a 90 10 share okay. um, and and that's what then that's how we would proceed we would have to put a change our application and and go that route okay. and, and I think justify it to the FAA who's who's already got the petrographic analysis and is is also kind of on board that it doesn't make a lot of sense to spend that money on a patch but it is an option and, and that's why I'm here is the you said the runway is 20 years old. Is that just the newest part, the extension? It's the that's the life that's the life of the most of the runway, Phil. As you know, it was extended um, a number of years ago. But the the well, I was major, thinking it was in, in the 90 mid 90s. It was it was extended out to the 5,700 feet. Yeah, it's fit. It's 5,900 feet. 59. I think it was 56. <clears throat> it went out another 300 feet or so. You know, I, but it they so classify it all as one. PCI and, and the PCI they're looking for is 85 and ours currently is at 70 and it, so it's not going to get any better it's going to get worse. Yeah. yeah, okay. Steve, are you aware, does Heinz have a corporate jet that they may, you know, in and out? I'm just kidding anyway. Um, we can certainly attract them with a nicer runway. Anyone else? <laughs> Council? Very good. Thank you, Steve. We will take that as concurrence to let this continue its, its course. Okay, yes, thank you. Okay, item number four on the agenda is a review and determine option for uh, Carver's Corner, the Mississippi Drive Corridor Project, and I am thinking, Steve, you are also uh, the presenter. Thank you once again, Mayor. Um, tonight I do have Jeff Hilgans. Jeff is the project manager slash lead engineer on the Mississippi Drive Corridor project and has been involved in it since its inception. And we were at a point, and you'll we'll go back a long way on this, it seems like, but where we presented a number of options for what we might do at what we refer to as a Carver Corner, the Green Street and Hershey intersection. And I know at that time there were a number of council <coughs> people that 
wanted to know when they would have the, their right to choose whichever one they wanted. Well, it's here. We're at the point now we're getting ready to file our a number of documents to receive our environmental clearances and one of those requires that we have a preferred option or if we have one that we list it. The list that we had from a range of the ones you saw earlier has really been has been reduced to three different options. I'm going to turn it over to Jeff. He'll go through those three options with you and then both he and I are here to respond to questions as we go forward. So, Jeff. Hi again, Jeff, and welcome. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for having me back again. It's nice to see you all. Um, I've got these options here that I can pull up. Okay, the first option is actually two options. Uh, we call it option 1C. Um, as you can see, it's, um, it's a realignment of uh, Green Street coming north um, to basically cut at a 45 degree angle across that, that open area and across, well, some existing buildings there and then, and then curve into um, Hershey Avenue um, going, going east and then going northeast. Um, then what happens is the, as the, the west leg of Hershey would come in and tee into this new intersection, which, um, which is created there, and then Green Street coming in from the north would tee into Hershey and not, not be part of that um, new intersection. <clears throat> what, what, we, what we were looking at with this option was, um, you know, the major movements going through town right now come come east on or west on Hershey you have to take a, a left turn to go south and vice versa um, people coming in, into town <coughs> in the other direction have to take a right turn so a lot of the major movements all have to turn at that intersection so this was a, a an attempt to remove all those turns and make the and make the major movements through movements um, so that's what that's what the I guess the major advantage of, of this option is and then a variation of this option, which is Jeff. Before which, you go, move forward, you're, you're yeah. not referring to this option as one C, correct? Correct. Okay. Yep. That's what that's what we called it in in the EA document, um, and in our in our studies we called this option one C. And there's a and then there's two variations of one C, and it has to do with the intersection control of that T intersection. The other variation um, we looked at was a three-legged roundabout. Um, as at the intersection there, um, just to just to show you how that would work, um, there are some safety advantages with the roundabout versus a T intersection, um, and you know some advantages for moving traffic through there. Um, so, but it does take up a little bit more space, and you know there, there's there's some give and take with with uh, whether which, which of these options you would want to use. So, you want me to just go on to the next one, and then we can well, have questions after. Could, could I? coerce you into making some sort of an identification for that roundabout option, like a one R. R, R. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> we could. How about okay. So, council, let's, let's call the roundabout one R, okay? <laughs> this is you important. just call it the roundabout option, I guess. It's the yeah. only one left that's that's available to, for consideration. So, <laughs> for tonight, that's what we can do. Okay. So, the other one that we're looking at, we call it <coughs> option 1D. And that's, a ve and that's a fairly similar to what you have out there now. The, the, what we tried to do though is to line up the north and south um, approaches on Green Street and so, that, so that we have a traditional four-legged intersection and, and we don't have that offset that, that you have out there now. So, that, um, so, we, so we swung the the uh, south leg over farther a little bit farther east uh, so that it lined up with the with the uh, green street the north leg of green street going up the hill um, and that that's a signalized intersection similar to what what you have now so that's option 1d and would this one be signalized i assume yep but the what our what we anticipate and the and we haven't analyzed in in depth you know whether or not um, a signal will be warranted, but the signal is there now, so um, 
basically if, if, if there's already a signal there, a new intersection, you almost always would, would, would replace that signal then. What about 1C? 1C, we'd have to look at, at, signal, at uh, signal warrants because we're changing the operation of, of what, of what uh, the vehicles that are going through that intersection. It's no longer a four-legged intersection. Now it's a three-legged intersection with, with um, a change in the, in the way that movements go, go through the intersection. So we'd have to analyze that. Um, but likely it would, pro it would be um, signalized as well. That, that would be in terms of relative the cost, is there any one of these more attractive than the others? Or do we in terms of what? Relative cost. Oh, well, relative, relative cost, it, I mean, typically the upfront <coughs> cost, um, the, this intersection, the, the 1D and the, and the roundabout would probably be comparable. The other T intersection might be a little bit cheaper just, be, just by looking at the amount of pavement that, the, that you'd have to build. Um, but uh, you it, oftentimes with with a roundabout intersection you'll pay a premium for the paving because it's got very specific grading requirements and it's a little bit tougher to build in a circle um, as opposed to straight and the contractors aren't aren't as used to it so you often would pay a, a premium there we you know we've we've done some costing and and there's not a huge difference between them but I but I think there is a bit of a premium with the roundabout which is the most efficient specific to traffic flow? The roundabout would be most efficient moving traffic. We, we don't have particularly heavy traffic movements going through here. Um, so a traffic <coughs> signal, um, you always have to stop for red light. And, and during, during most of the day, there's not a ton of traffic going through there. So you're going to have traffic stopping where there is no opposing traffic in, in, in a lot of cases, which isn't very efficient. So with a roundabout, you can just keep moving through. You yield at the yield line and, and you go. Um, and that's, that's the most efficient way to move traffic for an intersection like this where most of the time there isn't a lot of traffic. But if you have option 1C, which is on, on that page with the roundabout, <clears throat> considering the, the probable, I would, I would suspect the amount of traffic that would be coming off of Hershey Avenue coming onto this, uh, a simple stop sign would probably be more than adequate. It may be, but for, you're talking about the T intersection, yeah. Correct. Yeah. That, and initially, that's what we would look at as, as a first um, as a first analysis is, is we would look at it as a, as a stop on the minor leg, which would be Hershey coming in from the west, and see if, that, see if it meets warrants for a signal, and then we would go to that next step if it, if it requires signalization. Do we have any tra existing traffic counts on Hershey? <coughs> we do. Is, are, they, are they high? Is it, no, not, I mean, they're not particularly. I think we're, we're running at about, what, between nine and 10,000 a day. On, on Hershey going through there, which isn't particularly heavy, but it, depending on the types of movements, um, still may require a signal. Is that the and one? And when they come they're, through, they're going from Mississippi Drive on out on Hershey, or they're ten thousand. Which, which which direction are they coming or going? Well, <coughs> I don't recall exactly, but the 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 movements tend to be heavier coming, you know, coming from the to and from to and from the on the east leg and then going to the south would be heavier than 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 traffic continuing well, that's, west that, on yeah, Hershey. That's what I. Yeah. That's why the curve. We always thought about making that curve as straight as possible, mm -hmm. and if you straightened it out, if you wanted to straighten it out 100 percent, you'd have to <clears throat> displace McKee Button and yeah. a few others. Otherwise, it's it's. I mean, if you if you didn't care what property you you picked up. You could you could straighten that sucker out perfectly, right? You could just but, follow the railroad grade basically right. through there, yeah. Right, but I know last time we talked, we talked about the other D, I guess it is, uh, because we've done a lot of concrete work over to that corner already, and mm -hmm. I thought council was under the uh, idea that we were going to try to maintain as much concrete rather than tearing it back up again. <clears throat> yeah, that's one of the things to consider is uh, that that whole stretch of the east-west road there has been recently reconstructed 
Um, you could you could um, salvage more of that pavement by by going with option one D. You know, with the, in other words, with the roundabout, you'd lose more of that. Or Correct. With either of the one C, either one C or the roundabout yeah. option. Yeah, you'd have to you'd have to you'd lose <coughs> some of that up until the curve that goes to the northeast, basically. Yeah. But aligning that with Green Street <coughs> would then make it a true T. -N. T intersection, which would make it easier to handle than what it, it it's it's a disaster. Yeah, operationally, it makes it much simpler. Yeah, yep. But the other thing to consider, and, and I and it's and it was all kind of covered in in the study is, you know, the potential for this area for redevelopment, and that's that's something to consider in, in, when you're thinking about this as well. The the either of the of the what we call the sweeping curve options, this one C or the roundabout, use up more space that might be used for development than, than what the one D <coughs> option does. So we might get the white way redone, huh? Other side of the <laughs> so What you're saying then is that there would be a higher land acquisition cost to those two than, than one D. Very likely, yeah. I, we haven't done any analysis of land acquisition, but yeah, it's, you're, you'll be taking more land for roadway purposes and there'd be left, less left over for development. <clears throat> of the three, the one that I liked the least would be 1C, and I was, like Phil said the first time, I was kind of thinking, well, with all that new concrete, it'd be kind of foolish to consider the roundabout, but now, as I've learned more about roundabouts, I'm kind of swayed back that direction. I like that option from an operational standpoint. I mean, that For long-term operation and efficiency. You, That's you talk my opinion. We've talked some about traffic counts. Can you characterize, is, is our, are our traffic counts typically static? Are they increasing or declining? You know, I don't know what time horizon to put that over, but yeah. what would the trend be, you think? Well, for this area in particular, um, traffic counts have been relatively steady. Okay. Um, in fact, I think they've, they've, since the bypass has gone through, traffic mm -hmm. counts have gone down. So that would be a surprise, yeah. But. And they and we don't, you know, because it's this area is more or less fully developed. We might redevelop some areas, but um, the traffic counts we don't anticipate that they'll change a whole lot in the future, either. It would make my it'd make my decision easier if I knew what the actual traffic counts that were going on Mississippi Mississippi Drive turns into Hershey back a ways. Uh, I, I don't know where it is. Is it at the uh, marina business tire store, whatever? That there's a new business there now. Uh, that's tire where store. that's where Hershey Avenue actually starts. Uh, but the traffic count going out Hershey or coming in from Hershey uh, and not making the bend down Grand on onto Grandview would be interesting. <clears throat> if there's a minimal amount of traffic involved using Hershey, which I think it is minimal, uh, most of it is making the curb. Yeah, it is. It is. It is higher for the for the traffic that that runs along the curb. Yeah, I just I just don't have the numbers in front yeah. of me to know exactly what that is, what the difference is. Yeah. But we can certainly get get you those numbers if you'd like to look at them further. I'd say except during. Kinstein and soccer events, then we get a lot of traffic on Hershey uh, going both. Right. Th both well, that's true. We get a significant amount going both directions on Hershey. So. I, I I don't know, Steve. I, I we've we've talked a little bit about this. I think our recommendation is is actually one D. I, I I actually prefer the uh, the roundabout option that was taken off the table, uh, and I believe it was taken off the table basically due to the uh, the steep grade on Green Street. Uh, if, if that's uh, correct, so that one was taken off the table. 1D, from I, I think from our perspective, simply provides uh, uh, well, one, I like the realignment with Green Street, and then but two, uh, it leaves a significant amount of property on the riverside uh, available for redevelopment uh, rather than the, <coughs> the other, I guess, option 1C. So and you're, 1, leaving, 1 you're leaving as much of the existing new concrete in place as possible. Yeah, and I, I support exactly what Greg said. I think if, 
if you look at the 1D option, it leaves the bigger part of this available for redevelopment if you want to if you want to do that kind of development work down there. This sloping road or the, the cutoff, if you will, leaves you with remnant or orphan parcels that really don't lend themselves to really much development. So you've got this huge area of wasted property that's a struggle. The other thing I really kind of like about reorienting Green Street to the east a little bit is that you have those houses that are now almost out on the street on the highway there on the west side yeah. would all of a sudden get a front yard because the old highway would be gone and the new highway would move over and it would give it more of a <coughs> residential feel for those folks that right now they step out their front door into the sidewalk and then into the street. So that would help Can give that separation that? there on 1D. Can you bring that up? Yeah, and, and it would still be uh, acceptable for the existing businesses on the west side of Green yes. there too. Yeah, it, you'll see there they're accommodated. Once that old pavement section's removed because it's no longer necessary, that, in my judgment, would be something you'd look at probably transferring back to the adjacent property owner for them to take care of and give them a little bit of yard. But look at what it does with the rest of the site to the east of that alignment. It leaves you a blank canvas for what you want to do in the future. Who owns that? There's two owners in there. North Beach and T-Strake are the owners of the real estate. There. North Beach owns the, the Carver Corner, or is that well, no, city? we own the Carver Corner. We own the That's corner. what I, th I, I, right. I so thought that was North the situation. Beach, yeah. The Lumberyard. Yeah. The, the lumber old Lumberyard, and right. then T-Strake is the right. feed. Right, operator. okay. And there's plenty of other opportunities for roundabouts. Hershey and Hauser, or uh, Mulberry and, and Hauser is a really good opportunity. Yeah. So you said that the roundabout was eliminated originally because of the steep grade at Green the, Street? The other, the other round. <laughs> Gee, <laughs> talk about it was a, steep grade. There was an option 1A, yeah. which was a four-legged roundabout, which, which was not exactly in the position. The, inter, the middle of the intersection was a little bit farther south than what you're seeing here in 1D. So it, left, it, 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 separated, it had a little bit of separation from that north leg. But... The grade coming down green, um, there, there just wasn't enough room to make up that grade. And, um, and there was also some concern that the building that's on the, the northwest corner of the intersection would be, would be impacted there to a great extent if we tried to, if we tried to implement that 1A. Like the research, somebody sliding into the side of it or something. I think the research we've, <laughs> research we've seen indicated you can do roundabouts up to roughly a 9% grade, although IDOT disagrees with that. Uh, percentage um, up to nine percent grade to about a nine percent grade depending on your expert that you use the IDOT's Wisconsin expert will not agree with that our expert will, will, will disagree with that but this is a you know significant grade but that was eliminated um, and is no longer an option correct so Steve uh, I just like to say uh, being a member of uh, the fourth ward I, I've received quite a few phone calls, uh, actually, for, for the last full, full year, uh, with this becoming part, part of the newspaper again very quickly and part of our agenda. Uh, the phone starts, starts lighting up again. The, the, these older people do not know how to maneuver through a roundabout, so they're, they're scared. They, they feel their safety is, is being uh, uh, looked at, abused, et cetera, call it what you want. Uh, but when you uh, now say that the, uh, uh, the roundabout is not being considered, uh, people are probably applauding you for making that decision. And I want to commend the city for no roundabout, at least on uh, Hershey. Again, this is, you, this is your turn to select a preferred option. If you have one, that's what we want to know so it can be included in the documents. But I think I, think I speak for Greg and I, we, we like this option better than the other options. That's just our opinion. If, if you want it, there it is. I, will, and, I would agree with you, Wendy. And Council, we can move forward with some action tonight or we can take it home and think about it until maybe next week. Well, uh, again, I, the one I like the least is 1C, and I can be convinced that uh, 
one D is I can go with that even even though I, I like the roundabout concept. Maybe Greg's got a good point that this isn't the isn't the ideal application. And you can put that in the form of a motion if you like. <laughs> sure, I'll move that we adopt option one D or recommend one as D. a preferred option. As a preferred option, yeah. Yeah. the not one that's a, up not here not on adopt, the screen. Right. It's not necessarily a final decision, but that's it's a preferred right. it's a recommendation. Option. It's, excuse me, the one up on the screen is is the that's T. That's one D. That's one D. That's one D. Yeah. That's, one D. D. that's not a T. That's a realigned intersection, so it's straight north and south. Fine, of but Green there Street. is no roundabout. Right? No, no roundabout. No. Thank you. What you said. No. <laughs> Good. One second. Wait, I'll second have a motion, that. Council. Was there a motion? There a second. <laughs> second. I seconded that. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. And that motion carries. Thank you for your time. Excellent. We do you. have those counts, and I will tell you that that the traffic counts I'm doing by recollection I have dropped off since the bypass was oh, constructed. Yeah. Um, but the design standards that we're using for the reconstruction of this corridor will accommodate traffic through 2020 with a three lane. It's mm -hmm. got plenty of potential for growth. We can reduce the lanes and use the three lane even through the downtown area and, and still accommodate the projected traffic. Okay, thank you. Very good, thank you, gentlemen. <clears throat> 10 foot trail. Well, Council, item five on the agenda is comments. Uh, shall we begin with Phil? I have nothing at this time, Your Honor. Scott? Uh, just a quick one. Uh, I'll be absent next week, and I think that's Con or Councilman Lorette's last meeting, so I just want to uh, commend him for his service. I think he was a, a very dedicated public servant, and I commend him. Very good. Osama? I have nothing tonight. Thank you. Fine. Nothing tonight, Your Honor. And Jeanette, I hope you didn't take offense by uh, Councilman Bynum's comments about I, I was sitting here thinking about that. <laughs> Care to comment? <laughs> I think I've probably driven on them over in London. So, and that's tricky. And down in some of the southern states have them also, the roundabouts. Um, when's Mark's party? 545 on the 19th. Downstairs. Thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. And Councilman Tom. I have nothing <laughs> this evening, Your Honor. Thank Good. you. Greg? Nothing tonight, Your Honor. And I have nothing. Is there a motion Some to adjourn? Osama, meeting is adjourned. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you should do it around here. <laughs>